There's definitely underwater UFO activity that's been reported over the last four decades. Top secret military programs, psychic spies, and alien bases? Is this the greatest mystery of the Alaska Triangle? Imagine stepping into a place where planes vanish into thin air, hikers disappear without a trace, and the sea swallows ships whole. Welcome to the Alaskan Triangle, where tragedy and terror aren't just stories, but everyday occurrences. Now hold that thought, and let's shift gears to something out of this world, quite literally. You've heard the tales, right? Lights zipping across the sky, mysterious disc shape, crafts hovering in ways no human tech can mimic. These unidentified flying objects have been spotted everywhere, instilling both awe and a million questions. But here's the thing, ever notice that as quickly as these UFOs appear, they're gone, poof, vanished without a trace. No debris, no landing marks, nothing. It's like they're teasing us, making us doubt our own sanity, so much so that for a while it was even a crime to talk about it. So, where do these elusive visitors go? How come with all our advancements we're left scratching our heads with no evidence but hearsay stories we tell? The Alaskan Triangle might just be the key to this mystery. What if, in this land of disappearances, we're not just losing bits of our world? but gaining glimpses into another. If you think about it, the idea isn't as far-fetched as it sounds. With decades of UFO sightings tucked under its icy belt, maybe, just maybe, the Alaskan Triangle could be a gateway, a meeting point between us and them, whoever them might be. Buckle up, folks. We're about to take a wild drive into the heart of this mystery, connecting the dots between earthly tragedies and alien encounters. It's a wild ride, but who knows? We might just find the answers we've been searching for are hidden in the last frontier itself. In the vast wilderness of Alaska, where the Earth whispers secrets of the ancient, there's a region that holds more questions than answers, the Alaska Triangle. It stretches from the northern city of Barrow, down to Anchorage and across to Juneau, covering an area laced with stories of the bizarre and unexplainable. Picture this, you're standing at the edge of the water and out of the fog, then suddenly shapes start to form from its depths. Ships, unlike any you've seen before, glide silently over the water's surface, barely making a ripple. It's a sight that grips you with awe and fear. What are these vessels? And where did they come from? This place isn't just known for its stunning nature. It's famous for stuff that'll make your hair stand on end. Folks getting snatched by aliens, Bigfoot roaming around, unexplainable ghostly encounters, and planes disappearing into thin air. But the true mystery lies beneath the waves of the Gulf of Alaska, with waters plunging to depths of 26,000 feet. Whispers among those who dare to question suggest it's not just the depth that's terrifying, but what might be lurking within. So, why do we even care? For years, People have been obsessed with the idea of aliens visiting us. Many even believe they're already here on Earth. But every time someone says they've seen a UFO, the big brain scientists and star watchers just wave it off. Why the skepticism? Is it fear of acknowledging a civilization far more advanced than ours? Or is it a massive cover-up? A huge secret they're all keeping from us, especially with all the weird stuff going down in places like the Alaska Triangle? Think about it. Earth is covered by 71% water, right? Yet we've barely scratched the surface, exploring a mere 5% of it. This leaves a question hanging in the air. If truly, truly, the UFOs are real, and the aliens are already on Earth, where could they be hiding? The answer might be simpler and more chilling than we dare to imagine. What if they decided that deep down under the sea, where no light reaches, might just be the best place to hide and observe, without us noticing? The Gulf of Alaska, with all its crazy depths, could be the perfect spot for their secret alien base. I mean, Alaska's got miles and miles of coast no one's ever really looked at, and lakes by the millions. Sounds like a great hideout, if you ask me. If, for the past 40 years, reports of underwater UFO activity in the area have been persistent, suggesting a pattern of sightings that cannot be easily dismissed. These unidentified objects don't just fly. They maneuver underwater in a way our current technology simply cannot allow, even evading detection and leaving more questions than answers. Now what's crazy is that there's actually undeniable evidence that this might just be true. Let's go back in time for a minute, shall we? In 1969, Dan Willis had a job unlike any other. He was a certified high-speed code operator working with Naval Communications in San Francisco, a role that gave him a top-secret security clearance, something not many can boast about. 
His main job? He was a whiz at decoding messages sent in Morse code, a skill that was about to bring him face to face with the unknown. You see, back in the late 1960s, the Cold War was at its peak, and the United States military was on high alert for any unidentified objects that could pose a threat to national security. This environment made every report of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, particularly sensitive. Naval communications, where Dan Willis worked, played a crucial role in maintaining secure and efficient communication lines for the U.S. Navy, including the reporting of unusual sightings. But one regular day turned extraordinary when Dan received a Morse code message that was anything but ordinary. This message came from a ship far off the Alaska coast. What it described was mind-boggling. The crew had spotted a mysterious object, glowing reddish-orange, almost 70 feet across, just popping out of the ocean and then zooming straight up into space. Imagine that, a massive object, shooting up at speeds clocked by radar over $7,000 meek. Dan knew in his gut this wasn't something human made. When Dan received this Morse code message, it was through a secure military communication channel. Such messages were typically encoded to prevent sensitive information from falling into the wrong hands. But here's the thing though, even with such explosive information, Dan was stuck. There was a law back then, the 1953 Espionage Act, that meant sharing this kind of info could land you in serious trouble, like 10 years behind bars trouble. The thing is, the act was an indication of the era's intense focus on information security. During the Cold War, leaking classified information could be seen as aiding the enemy, hence the severe penalties associated with it. Dan was torn. On one hand, this information was groundbreaking. On the other, he had a duty to keep it confidential. Even though he wanted to share what he had learned, he knew the risks were too high. So, despite the massive urge to shout this from the rooftops, Dan had to keep the norm and pass the message up the chain of command, all the way to the big guns of the U.S. Navy. You might think a report like this would cause a stir, but it disappeared and swallowed up just like so many other UFO sighting reports. It vanished without a trace, leaving no public acknowledgement or panic. Dan, though, couldn't let it go. Knowing the risk of talking about what he'd seen, he stayed silent until laws changed, allowing him to finally share his story without fear of prison. This event kicked Dan into high gear. He started digging and found this wasn't a one-off sighting. There were other reports, other witnesses to strange disks emerging from the ocean's depths all near Alaska. This pattern of sighting suggested something more than just random UFO flybys. It hinted at a presence, something or someone, lurking in the deep waters off the Alaska coast, watching, waiting, and occasionally making an appearance. Among some of the reports Dan unearthed was one that was particularly chilling, enough to spread wild goosebumps all over. Summer, 1945. The world's caught up in the final throes of Wai Wei, and out in the icy waters near Adak, one of the Aleutian Islands in Alaska's southwest corner, the crew of the Army transporter ship De La Roth were about to get a front row seat to something that definitely wasn't in the briefing. The shop was idly cruising by when suddenly a crew member noticed something unusual, a series of ripples forming a mile away from their position. But these weren't your everyday sea waves. What followed would etch itself into the minds of those aboard. Before anyone could fully grasp what was happening, a massive object broke through the surface of the water. It was a gigantic, round object measuring somewhere between 150 to 200 feet wide, so big it could throw shade on a blue whale. As if aware of the ship's presence, it began to circle the De La Roth. You can imagine the terror and awe gripping the crew, faces pressed against the ship's windows, eyes wide, hearts racing. What was this thing, and what did it want? The object itself was silent, unfazed by the winds whipping across the sea, moving as if propelled by some unseen force. The sailors blessed their hearts, Though terrified, made a crucial decision, they would not engage. Fearing what might happen if they provoked this apparent visitor from the unknown, they held their fire. It seems their caution paid off. After circling the ship a few times, the object did something even more astonishing. It took off at incredible speed, vanishing from sight. The ship eventually made its way back to Seattle, the crew no doubt pondering the reality of what they had witnessed. Among them were 14 individuals, including a radio man, who had directly observed this enigmatic visitor. They did what they thought was right. They documented the encounter and signed a summary report of the incident. Yet, Yet once they, once reached, they shore, reached shore, their report, their report laden, with details laden with of this details inexplicable, of this inexplicable event, event, was buried in bureaucracy, never to stir the public consciousness. 
This incident, unearthed by Dan Willis during his research, is just one link in a chain of similar sightings. Time and again, eyewitnesses have reported seeing objects emerge from the depths, only to shoot into the sky at speeds defying explanation. This pattern of encounters suggests something more than mere coincidence. This brings us to Beverly Sue Waltz's eyewitness extraordinary encounter. Beverly was just your average person with an interest in the skies and the sea. One day, while by the ocean, binoculars in hand, she catches sight of not just one, not two, but thousands of these flying unidentified flying objects quietly, breaking the surface of the water, and then shooting straight up into the stars at an outstanding speed. What struck Beverly the most wasn't just the sheer number of these objects or even their baffling behavior. It was the realization that what she was witnessing defies any conventional explanation. These aren't military crafts or anything remotely human-made. Their silent emergence from the water and the incomprehensible velocity at which they disappear into the sky suggests a technology far beyond our current capabilities. In her heart, Beverly was convinced these objects were not of this world. They were evidence of a civilization light years ahead of us in terms of technological advancement. With such strange multiple occurrences, intriguing theories are born. Among the most fascinating is the concept of underwater wormholes acting as cosmic highways for alien travelers. Imagine, beneath the waves, a network of shortcuts through space and time, allowing extraterrestrial visitors to zip from one corner of the galaxy to another, all without ever surfacing for air. This idea isn't just science fiction. Some UFO researchers are convinced that these hidden portals lie deep within Earth's oceans, perhaps explaining the sudden appearance and disappearance of UFOs around the Alaska Triangle. And let's not forget the patterns, the weird hovering silent behaviors, the insane, almost instant speed, the unusual emergence from the ocean, not anything like our ships or submarines. Come on, this consistent behavior suggests a level of intention. What if the Alaska Triangle truly, truly is an extraterrestrial spaceport of sorts? A place where extraterrestrial visitors can travel to and from their distant homes through these underwater wormholes, all while remaining hidden from the majority of human eyes. I mean, it fits the book perfectly. Are we overlooking the most scandalous secret of our time? Could the world's governments be aware of an interstellar crossroads beneath our seas and choosing silence over disclosure?